Okay, so the first presentation is on IPv6 capabilities of commercial security components, with, uh, presented by NRA and Christopher Werney and Stefan Schwab. Yeah, okay. Oh, I, I mean, I, I figure it's uh, okay. difficult for you to pronounce that. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Well, my name is Enno. Uh, the first one mentioned here, this is Christopher and Stefan. Uh, we want to uh, say, give a short overview of some stuff we have done um, on the topic of, uh, say, testing IPv6 capabilities of um, security components. I won't um, uh, give any, uh, say, details on company and stuff. Uh, suffice to say, we are old school networkers and have been involved in a lot of IPv6 and IPv6 uh, mainly security stuff. Uh, in the past, and um, we are exposed to, uh, we, we are, say, in the enterprise organization space. Um, we are not in the vendor space, we are not in the, uh, say, academic space, but uh, what we do is um, uh, serving a very large organization when it comes to their needs as for network security. And uh, we noticed some, uh, say, gaps when it comes to IPv6 uh, support. Uh, this is what um, is the, the background. Um, of this of this stuff, I wouldn't even say a um, presentation. Uh, and this is um, the reason for giving this here is it's it's work in progress. We are happy to receive any feedback or any ideas or any suggestions where to go further. Uh, what I'd like to state in the beginning is um, we are a completely independent uh, consultancy and mainly assessment. We do lots of pen testing, audits, uh, reviews, uh, product evaluations, and stuff. Uh, we are an assessment company, we don't have any vendor affiliations. So there is, uh, we, there is no need for us uh, either to promote or to bash any vendor. Whatever we um, lay out here is, uh, say, based on a, on a matter of fact um, of testing. Uh, and uh, we, we just want to contribute um, to uh, what you expect, say, in the space of commercial security products, or some of them uh, we looked at, uh, given there's only a 30-minute time slot, we will heavily reduce um, what to uh, condense what we have done um, and just pick out some, some specific aspects. Uh, we, we just want to contribute to an understanding what, what works and uh, doesn't. Um, second, uh, this is, as I said, work in progress. We are happy to receive any kind of uh, feedback. Uh, we have a lab. Uh, in contrast to EANTC, um, who do, uh, say, testing uh, for a living, and obviously for them it's required to have a huge lab with all types of, I mean, uh, interoperability <laughs> testing is one of your main areas, isn't it? Um, uh, uh, for us, the lab is, uh, say, um, what we have in the basement, uh, some of the guys who go down and, and try to figure out stuff and uh, try to usually try to break stuff in, in some way, um, given we are a pen test company. Uh, there is a number of students uh, at ERNW and usually we assign tasks to them, like, okay, have a look at this and write your bachelor or master thesis, or we, we have some PhD students in the interim, uh, write, um, perform research work on a certain topic and, and use the lab for that. Um, uh, still, it's not, uh, we, we do not uh, say testing um, for a living. Uh, there will be in, in, in November, uh, there will be some, some kind of, I wouldn't call, even call it event, but if any of you want to come to Heidelberg and uh, join us for some, some stuff in the lab, um, there will be a guy from Greece, Antonius Atlazes, some of you might know him, he's the one who does a lot of research in the extension header and fragmentation um, space. Uh, he will be there and we will fiddle around with some um, commercial networking gear and uh, uh, his tools and stuff. Um, so this is our approach uh, to this stuff. Uh, lastly, before I get into it, uh, there is some related work. There is the stuff that marked it, uh, in particular uh, when, when preparing his article for uh, a German magazine, the CT, and he presented on, on some stuff uh, he did uh, at the IPv6 Congress. Uh, and there is, uh, there is a guy, Johannes Weber, um, a smart guy, nice guy, uh, who wrote his master thesis um, about uh, some stuff, a, a great piece of work. Uh, however, bo both, um, the, the, both uh, say, um, approaches that have been taken so far uh, mostly concentrate on, say, how, how does uh, security gear re react to certain attacks and to certain packets with certain specifics, which is not what we are mainly interested in. Uh, what we are mainly interested in somewhat derives um, from, I'm not sure if you can really see this, uh, the, I, I explain what is important on this slide. Um, uh, derives actually from a project 
uh, which we performed last year, uh, we did a firewall audit in one of um, Germany's largest uh, enterprises. And part of that was that they have a very, uh, say, good uh, IPv6 deployment rate. That means, um, uh, especially when compared to, uh, to other peers in the industry, um, uh, their full internet edge in, uh, in the three main data centers in, in APEC, uh, Europe, and um, in, in the US is uh, full blown IPv6 enabled, dual stack, um, everything they have. Uh, all M access, all uh, say web servers and, and stuff and um, they have certain types of uh, firewalls and security gear there and it turned out when we looked at it, a part of the audit we did, which was uh, not necessarily IPv6 related, but uh, part of that was have a look at it, the IPv6 readiness. Where do we stand? It was a small aspect in that and uh, we, we tried to, to look at uh, say vendor specs and when looking at this, I mean, this is from December 17th, 2012. This is from McAfee Enterprise Firewall, which is a, a technically secure, from a security perspective, a, a great product. But uh, looking at this, it was like, okay, wait, um, uh, they have a reputation, uh, that product, uh, McAfee MEF, um, uh, for supporting all types of protocols um, with specific um, proxies. Uh, this, uh, some of you might know this is, uh, was uh, the Sidewinder uh, firewall before McAfee acquired them. Uh, so they, they have certain strengths when it comes to, uh, to inspecting traffic. And when we looked at this, this is from the knowledge base, oh wait, all the, all the proxies do not support IPv6. So you have a box there you have, which you expect to, to, to provide a certain security benefit. And, uh, it might do so for IPv4, but it does not, at least of end of uh, 2012 uh, for IPv6. Which was, uh, say, the starting point for, for this uh, kind of work, as we, we try to figure out, okay, what does it mean? Uh, Sundar has these nice uh, stickers, um, uh, like, uh, uh, probably most of you have seen them uh, uh, during the event anyway, uh, legacy IP only. Uh, Many vendors would, would uh, say refuse or decline to put th those on their, on their products, um, like, oh, we support IPv6, but um, uh, obviously, uh, what does that mean, we support IPv6, what does this mean in particular in the space of, uh, say, commercial security gear? What does it mean once a firewall has a statement, we support IPv6, or, um, say, an IPS, or uh, a theme uh, solution? Um, so this was the background, and, and, and we tried to define what does it mean support IPv6. It could mean, and this is what we're mainly interested in, security feature parity. The device has a certain protection function in a given network environment. Does it provide the same protection function, the same filtering capabilities, same management capabilities, all this for IPv6? Uh, another one um, might be, okay, um, even if the same features and, it, and we will see this is not, um, in, 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 uh, largely not the case. I can already state this. Uh, even if this is, uh, uh, applies, does it apply with the same performance and robustness, uh, say, properties as for IPv4? It might be, say, IPv4 traffic is filtered in ASIX, uh, whereas IPv6 is filtered in, uh, say, in the CPU level, which uh, will probably have a certain uh, performance penalty. Um, so uh, even if the same features are supported, um, are they supported with the same speed and uh, maybe robustness? What about uh, IPv6 specific capabilities? If there is a device which can filter, this is uh, much stuff that Mark looked, uh, looked at. That's why we are not going to cover this uh, uh, at all in, in, in what we do here now. Um, what about filtering extension headers for uh, handling of fragments and all this? And, and there might be like, um, okay, do we comply with SAM standard, whatever that standard might be? Um, uh, I, I will give uh, some ex examples what uh, compliance with SAM standard might, uh, might mean. Um, getting back to uh, in, in a bit more detail, uh, the main question for us was, okay, um, if there is uh, support, if there was, uh, say, a label, we support IPv6. Uh, does this apply, say, to what we call simple filtering? Does it apply to advanced filtering, um, layer 4 and above, application-based filtering, content filtering, payload inspection, uh, whatever? Uh, what about high availability features? Are those supported, uh, say, clustering on, on, in an IPv6-only environment? Um, 
Uh, and uh, but yeah, there's VPN, which we, we didn't look at so far. I mean, uh, some of you, you might recall um, uh, IPv6 is somewhat related to IPsec, which uh, should, or at some time, must. And nowadays, it's, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, they moved it to should, uh, uh, should be supported in the stack. Um, so uh, not looking at this one, but uh, these are the ones from an enterprise perspective. These are the ones that are interesting. Okay, we have a, now that V6, uh, we, we do dual stack in our, uh, uh, say, um, internet facing environment. Um, uh, what about the, the protection capabilities? Uh, okay, I mentioned this, um, same, same uh, throughput, um, uh, IPv6 specific capabilities, and, and uh, I already said, okay, there's some standard. What could that be? I mean, there was RIPE 554. Uh, we assume that most of you are somewhat familiar with RIPE 504. Um, uh, Jan, you, you gave a presentation on this at uh, IPv6 Congress. And, uh, 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 so the, the point with RIPE 504 is it asks for some specific capabilities, but it, from an enterprise perspective, it might not answer the, the main question that is, okay, once I deploy such a device, uh, does it have the same function as before? Um, uh, so we, we, we try to, uh, we, in this uh, research, we try to answer those questions and um, uh, if, if you want to, um, we do so as we had the impression that our customers, um, uh, they ask for this stuff, but there is not much, um, say, publicly uh, available, say, information. There is some testing reports from uh, uh, the, the uh, usual suspects when it comes to, uh, to releasing uh, uh, testing stuff, mainly uh, from the US. One, one could ask the vendor, obviously with a grain of salt. Uh, you might ask industry peers, um, if any of you is from an enterprise organization and you want to get in contact with, uh, uh, say, um, uh, somebody from a very large organization running V6 uh, in their environment, dual stack in the Internet Edge, um, you can ask us, we can establish such contacts and obviously um, looking at mailing lists like IPv6 hackers might be an approach. Okay. So this is the background and we, we did some testing, we built a lab. Um, I will hand over to... Uh, uh, to Christopher here, we will quickly go through some stuff. Uh, we will make this available after the event, so you don't have to pick, take any pictures or notes or so. Uh, the full, I mean, it's a hundred, um, hundred slides uh, uh, thing, um, which was not, uh, say, prepared for this event. We put something together, but um, it will be available in short. Okay. Um, so. Good. When did you do that? When did you make this test? Uh, three months ago. Uh, so there is some. Um, uh, are you asking us for the for the image? Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah. We are aware that um, Cisco already released the next major release, um, 9.0. Um, but. Anyway, it's okay. Just want Yeah, um, we uh, we have chosen to um, to use 8.45. Uh, yeah, 4.5 because. That's the image we see mostly running in our customer environment. So, um, but um, we will defi definitely um, do the tests again with the new release and see um, how it turns out. So, as Anna already mentioned, we just took three um, firewall vendors to see, okay, how, how do they perform? Of course, we had um, Cisco with the ASA 5505 um, running the, I think it's still the latest um, 8.4 image. We um, took a Juniper with the new Gaia R76 um, release um, on a generic HP, uh, oh, wrong, button on a generic um, HP um, hardware. This, um, this R76 was released in February 2013 and Checkpoint claims this, um, this version has, has extended IPv6 um, support, so I thought to myself, okay, Let's see what um, extended IPv6 support really means in the context of Checkpoint, um, because in earlier releases it was quite a major pain um, to even get IPv6 running on Checkpoint boxes. Um, fortunately, this isn't the case anymore, but we will see that it, um, there are still some gaps to close um, in regards to feature parity and um, for uh, performance. And, that we, and then we took a Juniper SSG5 um, running the latest um, version available um, on the Juniper website. Oh. 
So um, the first test was a throughput test just to see, OK, how is the throughput um, in comparison from IPv4 and IPv6, um, just to um, get an indication, OK, um, does it perform similarly or are there any big um, differences? These are just um, the basic steps we um, took to create this um, test plan, I would call it. So we just um, generated a rule set for every firewall with approximately 1,000 rules. Uh, fortunately, we, di uh, we didn't have to um, write them uh, manually. We just um, created a little script and um, pushed it on the, um, on the devices um, with the exception of um, checkpoint because we had to configure it on the GUI. Um, so there was no um, way to script it. So it was a little bit of pain, but um, we um, this ended. This is usually a BMW where the students come in. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Okay, for step two, um, for performance throughput testing, we are using iperf version 2.0.5, um, 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 which fortunately supports IPv6. We just had a basic um, lab environment. We had a client um, on the outside interface, I would call it. We had a server on, um, on the inside or the inset um, interface. And then uh, we just looked, okay, how does the performance look if we are using um, iperf um, in this regard? And step three, or, or the Step two was, okay, create a baseline for IPv4. Step three was, okay, um, repeat the same test with IPv6 um, just to get um, the results in comparison um, in regards to um, performance throughput. And step four was, okay, um, in the first step we just um, tested the throughput and then in the, in the next step we tested, okay, what about when we um, activate application inspection for this um, test, we just used um, FTP copying a 1.5 gig file from the client, uh, from the server to the client and to see, okay, um, how, the, how does the um, device behaves. behave, um, both of course for IPv4 and um, IPv6. So, okay, um, IPv6 attack resistance. So, we just made some basic um, tests um, um, just uh, with the known tools. So, um, I will just skip it and head over to the results. Otherwise, we are running um, out of time. So, um, from, the, from an um, IPv6 traffic um, filtering support on the ASA, the ASA supports it for quite some time. Um, but um, as we have found out, okay, there's still some um, lack in feature parity in regards to IPv4, mainly for management stuff, um, NTP, SNMP, um, and syslog, even though in the, in the newest 9.0 or 9.1 major release, um, SNMP and syslog is not supported over IPv6, so I still have to use the IPv6 inf uh, IPv4 um, infrastructure to um, transport um, the syslog messages, for example, and um, of course um, the inspection engines, which are available on the ASA for IPv6. Um, we are getting there, but um, there are still some gaps to close in regards to the IPv4 world. But from release to release, um, it's get, it, it is getting better, and more um, protocols are um, available for. Inspection. Can, can you comment on this, um, Eric? Uh, the point is, uh, as for the inspects, we were told, uh, I, I met a Cisco guy, say, six months ago, and he told me, oh, oh we don't support most inspects. I, I was not able to, f to identify any source, publicly available source, which, wa which ones are supported and which ones not. Actually, it's in a configuration guide of the yeah, ASA. And I'm not sure what is the right front to talk about it. I mean, it's up to you, right? I, I don't want to talk as a, a Cisco guy on, on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But actually, um, it's in a Guide from the ASA, which lists um, the inspection engines w which are supported for IPv6 um, and okay. which not. So, yeah. the okay. most important ones um, FTP, HTTP, ICMP are supported um, um, for IPv6, but others um, like. Um, for instance, we, something with yeah. a small joke than anything else, we will not support CUCME over IPv6. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> so, Okay, um, these are just some um, vendor documentation, um, how, how much performance the ASA um, should be able to forward, uh, 150 uh, megabit um, bidirectional. So we were able to push approximately 30, uh, 93 um, Mbit in one directional, which is the nearly um, theoretical maximum for a fast Ethernet interface the ASA has built in for um, the IPv4 um, throughput, so nothing um, out of the uh, ordinary here. Um, this is just a screenshot from um, our iperf tests. And then, of course, we um, repeated the same tests with um, IPv6 throughput. 
and for um, and then again for the um, FTP throughput in in the application inspection and as we can see here and as it is seen here there aren't any major um, differences in kind of performance so as we can see here okay in IPv4 the ASA was able to push up to 93 megabits um, per second and in IPv4 it was um, 92 so um, it's nearly identical so which is a good thing yeah, it's nearly equi equivalent and the application layer inspection for IPv6 does not reduce the throughput of the ASA um, in this test case. So, okay, then we did um, some basic testing with our flooding. Um, well, okay, the CPU jumps to 100%, which, is, which wasn't really surprising as the um, router advertisement are CPU processed and the CPU in the ASA 5505, um, it's not that powerful so nothing um, um, interesting here and as we can see here as soon as we started the flooding um, there was um, the, our SSH session terminated and traffic throwing fluid through the ASA um, wasn't um, it wasn't able anymore as we can see here as soon as we stopped um, the flooding it um, where is your pointer as we can see, as soon as we stop the flooding, um, it all returned back um, to normal. Yeah, and, and then we, we tried it with um, the Scan6 module, but I will skip it, otherwise we will run um, out of time. So from a management protocol perspective, uh, message a, SSH and HTTPS um, works like a charm over IPv6. Um, Syslog not supported, um, as I already said, said over IPv6, and um, SNMP um, is also not supported um, over IPv6. Um, Eric, can you comment um, on that, uh, when it is planned to implement these features over IPv6? I would say 9.1, but I, I, I was about to check. Okay, um, at least in the 9.0 version it wasn't supported. Um, honestly, I haven't checked for the 9.1 um, version. If it's supported in the 9.1 version, which um, is definitely um, a good thing. And, and, and we can tell you, I mean, this is stuff that is important, say, for, for the type of environment we walk in. Uh, this is, uh, as I mean, obviously, um, once they are suf sufficiently large operations environment, uh, uh, as long as, uh, say, the management infrastructure does not fully support IPv6, uh, uh, they will um, not, uh, say, uh, wholeheartedly deploy IPv6. Yeah, um, failover um, is supported over IPv6 and in the meantime uh, measured initial support was in, a dot, in the 8.2 release but um, in the meantime it's working reliably um, over IPv6 and in the 9.01 release um, support for OSPF v3 was introduced but we as of right now we weren't able um, to test um, if it works as um, designed but um, this is still on our um, to-do list. So when it comes to management, uh, these stickers would be uh, would apply. Okay, these are the, re the results for um, the ASA. Now um, the results for the checkpoint. Yeah, um, as I already said, R76 is announced at the release with extended um, IPv6 support um, from uh, checkpoint but um, there are still some gaps to close in regards to feature parity to IPv4 um, but Checkpoint is slowly um, getting there but um, it's not 100%. So um, as we didn't have um, any Checkpoint appliance we just use a generic um, um, HP um, system and for the IPv4 test we were able to push 94 Mbit in one direction, which is again and also the theoretical maximum, as the checkpoint was also connected to a fast Ethernet switch. Um, I will skip these, these are just the test results. One interesting thing is, um, as we tested the FTP throughput with application inspection enabled, here um, in the top you see um, the IPv4 um, graph of the, um, of the download which looks normal. Um, as soon as we tried it with IPv6, we had these um, weird observation uh, that from time to time um, the complete download or the throughput um, breaks to zero and then starts to climb up again. 
we repeated um, this test, I think, 10 or 20 times just to verify that it wasn't um, some glitch in our um, environment. But in, every, in, all our, in all of our tests, we observed the, sa um, the same exact um, behavior. We do not have any plausible explana expl explanation um, for this behavior. We try to look up some, um, some information on the, on the checkpoint side, um, if there is, um, for example, um, advisory for this or something like that, but we couldn't find um, anything. And we have already heard from some of our customers that there are some problems in regard to the FTP throughput when the application inspection is enabled. But with IPv6, with IPv6 not with IPv4, but um, there isn't. A, we haven't heard any um, official statement um, from Checkpoint. So this is a kind of, I, I, we would say a known problem, but it's not the one that is uh, just uh, observed now or there. So um, here we see the throughput difference um, between um, IPv4 and IPv6 on the checkpoint. As we can see here, um, it's a little bit lower um, on the IPv6 side than on the IPv4 side. What yes. Is the one um, these are, are the, uh, the number of tests, test number one, two, three, four, five. So um, we have just done it um, five times and um, to see, okay, um, how does it, um, how does the test or the test results uh, look like? So um, this was with the um, 100 megabit um, switch. Um, and even with the new release, there were some performance differences between IPv4 and IPv6. And as already said, there, was a, there is a problem with um, checkpoint and FTP application inspection over um, IPv6. Um, and up until now, there's no official statement from checkpoint um, that, this is, that they know this is a problem and want to fix it. So we'll see um, how it turns out in the future if checkpoint wants to fix it um, anytime soon. So um, then we thought, yes. Uh, excuse me, could you speak a little bit louder? During the stroke of the FTP for IPv6, you check the, what happens to the uh, TCP session? Um, the TCP session stay, uh, stays open, it just does, doesn't transmit any data. So it's dropped by the firewall and it's still getting delayed and you have retransmissions? Or? Yes, we have retransmissions because it um, just times out and then it has to retransmit and then it goes up again. So um, then we thought SDHP server has a gigabit um, Ethernet card. So OK, let's repeat um, the test uh, with a gigabit switch um, in between just to avoid some um, buffer issues on the um, 2960 gigabit switches. We, uh, we just use a 4948E um, gigabit switch um, in, in between. So and repeated the tests. And inter interestingly, um, the Bandwidth difference or the throughput difference um, was quite huge. Um, as soon as we were going over um, 100 Mbit, as we can see here, for um, IPv4, um, we were able to push approximately 400 Mbit per second over IPv4, but this dropped to nearly um, half um, to 200 uh, megabits as soon as we tried it um, over um, IPv6. Yes. Did you try the same thing without the firewall in between? Yes, we did. The question just for the audio. So the question was if we repeated um, the test without the firewall um, in between. Uh, yes, we did that. And there we were able to, appro uh, to push approximately, I think it was 750 or 800 uh, megabits. So both protocols? Both protocols, yes. Yeah, uh, we thought that too. Um, we do not have any plausible explanation for that. The CPU utilization on the checkpoint was um, normal, nothing out of the ordinary. So um, again, no, we have no plausible explanation um, for um, this behavior of the box. Yeah, and the difference in the throughput can be quite huge. Um, as, we, as we have seen in the last slide, it's up to 40%. Um, percent. So. Um, checkpoint has to um, do their homework and um, do whatever they need to do um, to fix these issues. Yes. Just to see, when you're sending, when you're sending traffic, always on the same connection between the same address and the same port, or was it 
thousands of connections? No, it was one TCP connection. Only one? Yes. Mm -hmm. And was it one hitting the first line or one hitting, you said one and an access control rate, 1,000 entries? Yes. Was it hitting the first one or the last one? Um, we tested this um, for um, when the um, matching um, ACL was on the first place, on the place uh, 500 and 1,000, and it was for all three um, cases it was the same result. So there, there were no um, performance, um, or there were no performance um, difference um, when we are using when is we were using. One large file, or is this yes, it was system? no, it was one large file which we used for our tests. Yeah, then I will skip this. So, um, from a management protocol um, view, SSH, HTTPS um, work like a charm, like on the ASA um, for the checkpoint. The communication uh, um, between um, the sec security gateway and the smart console uh, works also reliable over IPv6, but um, unfortunately, syslog, SNMP, and NTP um, is not um, supported I over IPv6, and um, Check checkpoint is claiming that this is a release for extended IPv6 support. Um, so, um, but we'll see how it um, turns out in future releases. Yeah, cluster XL is for um, failover configurations also um, also available over IPv6. In the interim, it was in the interim. Been for a long time. Yeah, it hasn't been for a long time, and um, but we haven't um, done any tests to see if it works reliable over um, IPv6. And um, finally, uh, Checkpoint um, implemented VRP v3 and OSPF v3 in the R76 um, release. We haven't fully tested them either, but at least um, we, for a very basic test, we just put a Cisco router, configured OSPF v3, um, and checked if the JSONC comes up, and um, more testing needs to be done in this um, area. Okay. Unfortunately, um, just one. Uh, yeah, we are, we are running over time. Okay. Um, um, so, what do you suggest? We suggest um, break it up here. I mean, the, all the stuff will be available. Um, there was uh, two, say, purposes of the presentation. That was uh, give some idea of, of what we did and the results, and to get some feedback uh, from you. Uh, I mean, Stefan will be happy. He should have uh, presented uh, have presented for his first time um, uh, publicly. Uh, <laughs> Which will, which will not happen as we don't want to interrupt the, the whole uh, schedule. Skip um, through the results. Yeah, go to the, go to the summary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so... Next. <laughs> so, um, these... Um, the difference isn't quite that huge, as we can see, um, 92 me uh, megabits uh, for IPv4 and 89. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just the scale, so it looks, um, it looks, it looks ugly as as it is. Um, be, uh, this was just some Excel magic done from one of our students, so um, it um, the scale was automatically created, so it looks uglier than it um, really is. So. So, yeah, throughput is equivalent for, or nearly equivalent for IPv4 and IPv6. Application layer inspection does not reduce the throughput of the Juniper, which is a good thing. Um, so, and this one, as with the other two firewalls, SSH and HTTPS works like a charm, but um, syslog, SNMP, and NTP, so um, it's not supported over IPv6. Which is, uh, I mean, that's hilarious. Uh, I mean, it's 2013, and uh, these are major, major gear um, on this. Um. I, I think this is a, a, a SSG box, right? So yes. So they haven't developed any new features on this box for quite some time now, because all the new development goes to the SRX uh, series. So yes, uh, uh, that's, that's, a, that's, uh, that's a fair point. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have an SRX, um, but um, fair point, we should. Um, do this test again with an SRX box to see how, how it behaves. I can confirm that the syslog as an and NTP does work on IPv6 on SRX. Yeah, okay, great. That's uh, thanks for Good news. <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. Okay, so that's it from yeah, there was my part. Much more stuff we did um, 
uh, now that, that would have been the part that um, uh, Stefan did. So what, what might be mentioned here is uh, uh, when it comes to RIPE 504, uh, he, he did some practical, okay, the, 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 is, is that really supported? Um, uh, I mean, just uh, this very basic stuff looks good. Uh, here it is, uh, becomes a bit more difficult, say, um, from a window perspective. Um, uh, just basic RIPE 544 um, expectations might not be fulfilled. Uh, what is furthermore, um, say, interesting uh, from this, uh, he will do um, uh, some, for his bachelor thesis, which he starts uh, the day after tomorrow, 1st of August, uh, it's planned to do quite some, uh, say, fuzzing, uh, both with um, DIZI, which is our own fuzzing framework, um, uh, he wrote some IPv6 uh, scripts for that and um, some stuff with Scapy. Uh, we will make, um, uh, if, if needed, we can make the stuff available. Uh, they are not yet, you can't download those, um, say, the, the IPv6 definitions for fuzzing, uh, for, for Dizzy right now. Uh, but um, if there's any interest from you uh, in this stuff, um, uh, we will put this uh, together with the presentation on our blog. Um, uh, if, you, if you're okay with that, Stefan, yes, we'll provide it. And um, yeah, the, the, the point is, um, especially from, from his perspective, given he's uh, going to write uh, his bachelor thesis about this, uh, is there any suggestions from your side? Like, oh, you guys, you, you should look at uh, the following, or uh, did you have a look at, or uh, obviously there is more gear to be tested. Um, so, any suggestions, any feedback? Right now, I mean, we we gave her for some hours now. That we will have a beer uh, later on. And you, you may want to test, I mean, firewalls are not the usual box. They are usually at the edge of the network. So some attack that make more sense than others, like for instance, error studying on the internet edge firewall. I don't think it's a lot of sense. Yeah. It doesn't, no, it's used to fail, right? But being able to filter on specific extension headers or blocking this kind of stuff, uh, and of course, we got the PF checks uh, are pretty important. Yeah. Control plane policing, and I don't know the way, but it's important. Okay. Thanks for your attention, yeah. and uh, enjoy um, the meeting and ITF 87. Thanks. Okay.